Since the dawn of time, humans have turned to dice for the answers to their greatest problems. The rolling of dice has guided thought. It has won and lost wars. It has helped me decide where to go for dinner. The D20 was the perfect, fair, and impartial tool to solve all of the world's problems. Or so we thought. Recently, while on a dig in Greece with some of the greatest minds known to humankind, I unveiled the disturbing truth. Cursed dice. With the confirmation that no die was safe from this curse, I turned to technology and made the Roller Dice 9001. This isn't merely a random number generator, this is the future. With the introduction of the math switch, say goodbye to stress-induced brain farts, preventing you from enjoying that massive fireball you just threw. Never fear dim light again, with an LCD screen brighter than a sunbeam, always displaying your rolls when you need them most. Never fear that curse again, and buckle in and beat the curse with your very own Roller Dice 9001. <laughs> All right, let's get started. To house our project, we're gonna be using these little mint tins I got off Amazon, but they're the exact same size as an Altoids tin, so feel free to use one of those instead. The next thing we'll be using is some wire glue. Wire glue is a conductive glue that you should be able to use instead of soldering. I've been super curious, so I decided to try it out on this project. So this will also be an informal review of wire glue. <laughs> the next thing we'll be using are these little prototyping boards. These fit wonderfully in those little mint tins, and along with this 3M double-sided foam tape, it makes for an easy place-and-go project. Now for everything we'll be putting on the board. First, a 1000 milliamp hour lithium polymer battery. Responsible for charging and protecting our battery is the TP4056 charging module. I've used these in a lot of projects with no problems, and also it's Type-C, so that's nice. Our battery outputs 3.7 volts, and we need at least five volts, so this is our boost converter, the MT3608. And finally, the brain of our project, the hi Go Pro Micro. So let's start getting this assembled. First, I'm going to be attaching everything using this double-sided heavy-duty mounting tape from 3M. It's meant for indoor or outdoor car, home, etc. usage. It's waterproof and high temperature resistant, so while it doesn't say good for electronics, I feel like it should be safe for what we're doing. I use this time to try to figure out exactly where I want everything to sit on our board. If everything is close together, I'll use less wire and may have an easier time fitting everything in the end. But I'm worried I might have a harder time trying to solder everything as I go. I opt to place the Arduino on one side of the board and my charging module on the opposite side. This will give me more space to work with my iron, I think, but I also am gonna have longer runs of wire, so we'll see how that plays out in the end. If you do use this tape, be careful where you place things because once it's there, it is not coming off without a fight. Once everything's in place, we're gonna go ahead and do a fit check. That is looking good. And before we get it placed in the tin, we're gonna go ahead and strip our wires and start up with our first round of gluing. We're going to take the red lead from our battery, that's our positive, and put it into the B plus, the battery positive, terminal on the charging module. We're gonna do the same for the negative, the black lead, we're gonna put that into B minus. Using some flexible 22 gauge wire, we're now going to connect our charging module to our boost converter. Now, if you're doing this yourself, you'll probably wanna put in a power switch in between these two things first, but I was really antsy. I just wanted to know if this goop, this <laughs> wire glue, it looks terrible, if this wire glue was actually gonna work. So I decided to skip the switch for now, get it dripped on into place, and do a test. After about two minutes of mixing, it actually formed a perfect consistency, a little runny. By a little runny, I mean a lot of runny. If you decide to use this, be very careful. Use a very small amount. You're gonna see why in a bit. But we got everything glued up. We let it dry. We pull out our multimeter. Drum roll, please. And boom, 3.77. We are we're getting we're getting flow of electricity. That's amazing. So on the side of our boost converter, there's a little potentiometer. And as you twist that counterclockwise, that will boost the voltage up to your desired level. This board can take anywhere from 5 volts to 12 volts. I like to go with 9. I don't know why. I feel like I've had better luck 
doing nine. I've done five before, and that doesn't seem to be enough for stable uh, functionality, but nine might be overkill. So let me know if you know better. Now, feeling overconfident in this glue's ability, I snip the red wire and get ready to make the power switch. But first, I'm going ahead and connecting a red lead from our boost module to our Pro Micro. This is super sped up, and this is the first time I realized how difficult using this glue is going to be, but we got everything set up, and we're placing it in the case because we're gonna make our outline for our holes. It was really important to me that this was not only able to be charged on the go, but also have the code updated at any time. So I made one hole for the charging module and the other for the Arduino. It's hard to get a good angle here, but what we're using is a Dremel to carve out and shape our holes. This is just a Walmart brand, a hyper tough rotary tool. I love this. I've had it for three years with no issues whatsoever. One thing I do want to touch on is PPE, personal protective equipment. I am using a respirator right now that is equipped with P100 filters. The amount of metal shavings and dust this can put off is crazy, so be safe. All right, back to the project. After getting the slots carved for my ports, I use a rotary bit to file off any burrs that might have been made. And voila, we're getting a good lineup here. Now we just knock out the last hole that we're gonna need on the base of our case, and then we move on to the lid. The lid is going to need a large cutout for our LCD display. So I'm first going to outline the display, then mask off our outline with some electrical tape. I'll be using a cutoff wheel to remove this section of material. So the tape both serves as a guide and as a thin layer of protection in case my hand wanders. Let's talk about PPE again. These discs are very brittle. And if you tilt or twist the tool, even just a little bit, they may shatter on you. So wear eye protection. And now I've never seen anyone wear gloves while using one of these, but I can definitely say today, I was glad I was wearing one. Yeah, I'm not sure if that would have done damage, but I, it was a sting. I felt it through the glove, so I'm glad I was wearing the glove. So yeah, everything's going great, right? Everything went wrong. Let me save you some time by sharing my sorrows. Feeling like everything was going great, I went ahead, I added some tape, and started gluing everything up some more. Then I got to this part, these tiny little leads for our buttons, and started to add the glue. The glue was pouring over into everything, so I had to scrape in between each of our wires to get the glue off of the contacts because nothing was working. Everything was shorted out. But then I had to add more glue because I had removed too much for there to be a solid connection and the wires were just popping out of the holes. And after over an hour of this, I just decided to remove the glue and start soldering because I thought that was the only issue, right? So I just continued on with my merry day and busted out the soldering iron and started to finish the project. At this point, I thought, you know, the glue's still usable, but not for this project. And soldering everything took a fraction of the time. I'm saying I did all the soldering, got fully caught up in 30 minutes, when it took me like four to six hours of gluing time to get to the same point, just because of drying time and multiple layers. Well, Josh, why are you still in fast forward? That's all that went wrong, right? You should, you're good. Wrong. At this point, I still was unaware of what had truly transpired. The glue had sabotaged me. Sounds like user error. <laughs> okay, yes, I, I messed up with the glue. I was impatient, added too much, too frequently, and it ended up shorting out basically everything, and I had to pull the entire board out to get the remaining glue out. And I just decided, you know what, I'm just gonna cover this entire metal surface in liquid electrical tape. Overkill? Absolutely. Was it the perfect solution? I don't know, I, I don't know, but it was fun. I love using liquid electrical tape. And now I feel just a lot, a lot better about the whole thing. So since we've added some height from the liquid electrical tape, I'm using this super thin double-sided tape. So hopefully we're not gonna have to router out some more material. This stuff is crazy sticky as well. So as soon as it's in, it's in, it's not going anywhere. Uh, but luckily it seems that the material we added was not enough to throw this off too much. It's a little high, but it's fully workable. That is a win after hours of wasted effort. Finally, we are at the finish line of this project. We are connecting our power switch 
once again. So we are finally, finally ready to start working on the lid, the top of our unit. Some much needed relief was felt when the LCD screen fit in the top of the tin. So you've seen this glue a couple times now. This is JB Weld Super Weld Light Activated Glue. This is super convenient to use. It dries in like 10 seconds. However, it is very runny and that is a problem that we will touch on, well, right here. So as you can see, I'm kind of pouring this glue in and it's seeping into the rest of the LCD screen. I got super lucky uh, that it all worked out. The LCD screen did not break, but it definitely could have, I think, because <laughs> I'll show you later. For now, back to the build. We are moving on finally to adding our buttons, the buttons that will be our dice, our virtual dice and I'm going to mask off the area, once again, to protect the surface, keep it from marring too much while I drill. I'm going to use the rotary tool again, but this time with the drill attachments so that we can get the basic shape that we need for the buttons. After we're done piloting our holes, we're gonna switch to a grinding bit and get them to the right size. Remember when I said the JB Weld Super Weld was really runny and that could be a problem? Well, I was very delicate at first, like this, but after I had everything seated and it seemed like everything was fine, I added one extra layer to hold everything in place. That was where everything went wrong. Everything went wrong. Yeah, this, this, I did this three times. Not three buttons, but like, all of them three times. That's a chisel. So here's the right way to do it. Do one drop at a time. Go slow, let it drip, and then flip it. There we go. And then you light it up. If you think you're about to do enough, do less. So yeah, third time's the charm. Third time of six. So, you know, 18th time's the charm. But yeah, look at it. It's beautiful. I have all the buttons there. We got the screen. And most importantly, they click. And finally, one last time with the router, and we have the slot for, bam, our math switch. This thing is tiny, so we're gonna use some rapid fuse to hold it in place while we glue it down. Once we have one side fully cured, we're gonna go ahead and remove the blue stuff and do the other side. I use this all the time, by the way, holding up papers on my walls. Probably don't need them, I barely look at them. It's just fun to do. But anyway, be very careful again while using this. It's not just buttons that get affected, switches can as well. And if you have a switch that gets sealed, boom, that switch is gone. And that's sad. I don't know why they're cheap as well as buttons, but the switch, it hurts more with switches for some reason. Take your time. But finally, the lid is done, the body, it is time to solder. First thing I did was go ahead and run two ground cables out of the two ground pins. One was going to go to our buttons and our switch, while the other is going to go directly to the LCD screen. I apologize for the next few steps. I kind of just jumped around. I started out by running a ground cable to the very first of our buttons. Next, I jumped back to the LCD screen. I went ahead and tinned the blue line and got that attached to the SCL pin on the I2C display there. I always try to use purple or blue for SCL. The L means lavender in my brain and I'm able to remember blue or purple goes there. And I try to use gray for the SCA pin. SDA, SD gray, I, it just works in my brain. If I have no gray wire, I will go ahead and substitute with some white, which we see here. If I was doing this again, I would immediately go ahead and do the five volt in the ground on the LCD display. Instead, I jump over to doing <laughs> the buttons and it creates kind of an obstacle later on. So if you're doing this for some reason following along, if you haven't watched the whole video first, then do the screen first, trust me. <laughs> so now we're getting our D4 button set up into pin number four actually, D4 to four, that's correct. Next, we're doing our D6, that goes into pin five. Our D8 is going into pin six. D10 going into pin seven. That is our 12 going into 
pin 8. And R20 going into pin 9. And now that I've made a whole mess of wires in my way, it's time to go ahead and finish wiring up the screen. <laughs> Luckily, it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be, but definitely do the screen first before you have all these lines just flying up over it. My next challenge was deciding how I was going to ground each of the switches to the Arduino. I thought maybe making the chassis a mutual ground, but I wasn't sure if that was going to work. So what I decided to do instead was kind of wrap two wires together at a time and then solder them, make them have a soldered connection as well and kind of just make this like loopy little ladder chain, I guess. I don't, <laughs> if there's a name for this technique, let me know. I don't know, I like it, it looks cool. It's a lot of fun to do. Somewhere along the way, I forgot my original plan of having a separate ground for my buttons and switch and the LCD screen. And I just drag the line across from the LCD screen and just attach it to that whole mess. But you know what? It's the end, it's the finish line. So after just a few more things, I present to you the Roller Die 9001. You might have the power of the sun in your hand, but I got the power of math. What's better than rolling one D20? Rolling a crap ton of D20s. Sick of math? Flip the switch and you're back into standard rolling mode. You like ASMR? Well, ASM this R. The Roller Die 9001. Make yours today.